morning, guys. And wouldn't this just turn your stomach? More snow. So, don't look like there's going to be much on the go today. So, I'm going to go back at the BX. And I'm going to tell you, we got more snow coming this week and this weekend. So, we're going to run out of places to put it all, I think, the way it's looking. Anyway, let's get back in the shop. Morning, YouTubers. Well, it's another morning. It's another little project. I got a couple on the go today. I want to make the uh, guard for the uh, fuel filter that I put on the other day on the last video. And I also want to make a uh, couple of stands that I can put the implements on so I can push them around. So I got the casters. Hang on, I'll go get the casters and show you. Back in a minute. So of course I went to Prince's Auto and we got some casters. And we got a couple there with uh, actually brakes on them, so there you go. So hopefully they'll do the trick. I'm thinking about making the frames out of aluminum, so uh, it'd be lighter and easier to move around. And when they're not in use, I can hang them on the wall. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Plus, I won't have to paint them, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. And uh, it's pissing snow out there this morning, so. It's going to be a quiet day. The roads pretty well look like they're deserted. So it's a good day to have the uh, BX in. It's dry. And I'm going to start uh, making up the guard for the uh, filter. Don't really know how I'm going to go around that yet or get about it. But uh, when I get into it, I'll figure it all out. So it's just a matter of time. So let's get to it. Let's have a look and see what, uh, see what we're in for here. Okay. There's our new filter. Looking nice and pretty and tucked away. But it really should have a guard around it. But how do we put a guard around it? Well, if hindsight was 2020, I would have made allowances for a guard, but I didn't make allowances for a guard. Now, the easy thing to do here would be to make a guard to come up and hook onto these bolts and go across that way. But you know what? If you guys have been watching any of the videos at all, I got a tendency to take the long way around. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take off this bracket again that I made and I'm going to make allowances on that bracket that I can bolt a guard to on the bracket. Have it. I, only, I don't need the uh, guard to come up to this. I only need the guard to come up and cover the plastic bowl. Because I still want to be able to gain access to the fuel cock. So I think I'm going to uh, make allowances here for it. And then I'm going to uh, have it come out around. And possibly even bolt on to the tube here. So it's... Uh, it should be interesting. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, which requires me to take off, well it's not too bad, just take off the two top bolts and uh, just push this aside. Then I can get at the bolts holding the bracket on because I had drilled and tapped the uh, frame of the FEL. So that's, that's no big deal. So that's what we'll do and uh, I'll show you some progress pictures or some progress videos we'll call it. Okay, we got a little issue. I want to make a mounting block for the guard, but I don't have wide enough material, so I cut, the, I cut it lengthwise, but now it's too short to clamp into the vise of the uh, horizontal bandsaw. So what do I do? Well, here's what I do. I take the stock back again, and I'll uh, tack that onto the stock and then I can clamp it in like you normally would and that's the way I'm going to uh, cut that uh, piece of block. So that's just one way of getting around the problem. You can see what, uh, what I mean about welding on the original bar. Now I can get out and safely cut it. You can't clamp anything to it and it's not safe to clamp anything to it. These saws will even have a pretty powerful so you don't want to mess with them, you want to make sure that you've got stuff clamped down to be well when you're cutting them. So, you want 
Nice clean surface to work with. I think it is anyway. Okay, I had to notch it out. That way I can uh, avoid taking out the bolts, those big old ugly bolts on the frame. Don't want to mess with those. Don't no need of disturbing them, so I'm just going to make up a little bracket here that I can bolt the uh, the guard to. So you can see where I notched it out and. Uh, does a nice clean, clean job with the mill. So as you can see, I pretty well faced it off. It's, uh, it's nothing fancy, but it's going to work. It should work well. I'll show you what we're going to do with it here now. Let's go over to the tractor again. So as you can see, it will go. We'll go like that. And you can see where it fits down around the bolt. And uh, it's hard to hold the camera and do it at the same time. But yeah, you can uh, you can see. So what I got to do, I got to have it where the bolt can come down and the screw come down, and it will clear there. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill and tap two quarter bolt, two quarter holes here. And uh, that's where the uh, guard will will bolt to, and then I may end up making something similar for the other side. I'd like to have the guard, you know, uh, bolted on both ends, not just hanging on one end. But uh, and then again, you know, maybe it won't need to be on both ends. It's only just to keep branches away because you're you're never going to stop a rock. You can put what you want there, and if if, well, of course, if a rock gets up that high, that's abuse. You know, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't be in an area where the rocks are that high. Yeah, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just bolt it onto there instead of bolting it onto the frame. And uh, I'm going to weld this to the original bracket that I made in the last video and clean it up a bit. So now I'm going to drill it and I'm going to tap it. And I'm going to have to do that in the lathe or in the uh, milling machine because I want it to be straight and true. So... It's a, it's a good job on a snowy old day. Okay, so we're going to drill them out there now. I always like to use a bit of cutting fluid. And I always like to take little short darts out. The reason being, the cuttings don't be too hot and greasier to clean up. But the cutting fluid is essential because the cleaner the hole is, the, uh, the better the, the thread will be. You've got to thread it, so that's the that's important. Precision job, so I'm not too concerned about exactly where the holes are, but I like for them to be straight and I like for them to be true. So that's why I'm using the mill. This will drill them automatically too, but I kind of like when it's when there's only a couple of holes, I kind of like to do it manually. Don't lose your touch. Less chance of something breaking like a drill bit. Not sure if I got another number seven drill bit, so 
that's the reason why. I'm just being a little bit cautious. Just a little bit. I guess watching somebody on video uh, machining is like watching paint dry, but if I don't show you a little bit of this, you'll say, how come you didn't show me a little bit of that? So, and plus, got to try to take up some time on the video. There you go. That's it for that, so I can take that drill bit out. If I can get it out, there you go. So that's cool. That's a nice, uh, nice clean hole. So then we're going to go and get set up now, and I'm going to put uh, that spring-loaded uh, thingamajig in I had here the other day. I'll. Uh, I'll find it and I'll come back and then I'll show it to you. Wanted to show you these again. Uh, in the last video, I think it was the last video. No, the video before that, I showed you this. And most people probably won't even know what this is. Unless you're a machinist, you'd know. But here's a tap. And if you look at the way the tip is on it, it's kind of pointy. And if you look at that, it's got a hole in it. And if you look at that, they kind of go together. What I like about this is you put this in your drill truck or your, or your drill press or your milling machine and it's spring loaded. And what it does is it keeps constant pressure on your tap. And that way you don't have to be continuously trying to wind down your uh, feed on your mill or your drill. So it, uh, it kind of makes it a lot safer for the uh, for the tap. So we're just going to chuck this in now, and I'll kind of show you what I mean. This is a keyless chuck, by the way. Not a real expensive one, but it works well. So. And uh, there's two types, and here's the other type. It's got a, a point on it because some taps actually got a hole in them on the end, so you can use that type as well. So, just thought I'd let you know. And thought you might find it interesting. What I find interesting, most people don't. So I guess I'm a kind of strange that way. So now we're going to set this up. Basically what I got done is I got a starter tap in there now. So uh, it's all true, it's all working good. Sorry about that last frame guys, we had some customers come into shop so I had to tend to that. So actually this is two hours later from the last frame so I won't edit it out just to show you that stuff happens. But anyway, let's continue on with our tapping now. By using that spring loaded attachment in the uh, milling machine, I'm keeping it straight. Use lots of cutting fluid and you're away to the races. That's the furnace cutting in, so don't get a fright at home. There's nothing going on at your place, it's all here. Sometimes these little jobs take so long, but people got to come in the shop, they want to do business with you, so you got to stop and talk to them. That's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep on going like that till I bottom out. And then I'm going to uh, put a bottoming tap in it. That way the bolts are going to be nice and okay, I'm right to the bottom there now. Then the bolts are going to be nice and uh, straight. Everything's going to be right smurfy. So.
I had to go and do some snow clearing too. Our dry was getting pretty blocked up. So that's been done. That's pretty cool. It's the fastest way to do that. A few cuttings in there. I need a rag. No, I don't need a rag. I need is this. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just tap the other one now as well with the starter tap. And then I can uh, continue on as if I was normal. And I'll do the bottoming tap then and I'll do the uh, two of them again. Yep, 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 yep. Here you go. Make sure it's down straight. I need a camera person here. I could be able to show you a lot more of it. I think the good Lord should have gave me three hands instead of two. One to hold the camera and two to use the tools. That would have been really convenient. But I got to do with what he gave me, so. So sometimes these things might seem like they take a long time to do, but. If you want stuff to work good and, and last long, you do it right the first time, then you don't have to do it over again. That's the way I look at it anyway. Okay, that's the bottoming tap. That's the uh, starter tap done. There you go. So now when I put my bottoming tap in there, I know it's going to go in there true. And do it. Okay, there you go. It's done. That particular part. So, this is the cutout for the bolt. And, uh, there you go, that's what it looks like. Threads are really nice, really nice and smooth. So now I gotta go take the bracket that the uh, external fuel filter is on, take it off the uh, chassis again, or the frame, and uh, weld this on. Of course, I'm gonna have to sandblast the paint and the primer off that I put on on the last video, which was yesterday. But that's no big deal. It's, uh, it's still worth doing this. So, back at it. Okay, brackets off. So here's the issue. I gotta weld that to that. But I kinda don't like leaving the gap down here, so I'm gonna fill that in. When I get it done, I'm gonna show you what it's like. So hopefully I can have it look half sensible and uh, see how it turns out. Okay, here's the bracket painted and all. I apologize for not showing you the steps going through it, but been crazy with people coming in and out of the shop today, so I'm kind of trying to do this between people and jobs. So I'm just letting that dry, then I'm going to bolt it on, and then I'm going to uh, turn around then and I'm going to uh, make the guard. So stay with me. Okay, I'll show you what the bracket looks like now, uh, modified to accept the uh, guard. I painted the bolts as well. So there you go, guys. That's what it's going to look like. So I'm going to put the uh, put the uh, filter back on now. Then I'm going to start to make the guard. I was going to use some uh, one eighth aluminum plate, but I'm going to use some one eighth steel plate. I got my lines marked on it there now. So. I shall shear it out. Excuse 
Excuse me for a second, guys. Got to put the plate back. Bend it, and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to put a, a pin down it. Something like this. Better turn this around because I don't know if you're looking at me or not. Okay, so I'm going to uh, bend it like that and cut a little notch out of it, and then hopefully we can come fairly close to uh, what I got on the go there. And then I'm going to uh, see what it fits like. Hey guys, I had to uh, pick it up a bit. A lot of people coming in the shop today with distractions. So, but anyway, here's the guard that's made. As you can see, uh, what I did is I just took a piece of pipe and uh, laid it in the, in the uh, bench vise, and I heated this up till it became orange, and uh, I bent it that way. And uh, what we did is, uh, wifey decided she's going to do me some decals. And uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's the original Kubota filter, so I can just look at it and, and know exactly what filter I need. So uh, I'm going to prime it, I'm going to paint it, I'm going to install it, and then I'll uh, show it to you. Well, I started out this morning with a clean garage. And just to make one guard for the filter assembly, I got a dirty garage again. So I guess I'm just going to have to clean it up in the morning because it is, what time is it? It is 10 to 7 p.m. So let's have a look and I'll show you what we, uh, what we ended up with. See if you like. Here it is, guys. That is the guard. It's 1A plate and it's very, very tough. And you can see the piece that I milled out. And of course, that's welded on to the original bracket that I uh, had, that I featured in the uh, video yesterday. And I used the Allen set uh, bolts in it this time. And my wife, Kathy, was good enough to. Uh, do up the decals. You did too. I'm going to put one on the 5740 as well. And that's kind of nice. It identifies the, uh, the thing as an actual fuel filter, I guess. And also the fuel filter number. So I thought that was pretty cool as well. So there you have it. So that's that conversion completely done. I think it looks pretty good. It was well worth the effort. So, hope you like that. Well, I will admit I made one big mistake today. It started out to be a snowy day. It was uh, pretty well coming down good when I came out here this morning. And I worked, I started at this at, I think it was around 8.30, 9 o'clock. And uh, I think around 11 o'clock, I decided, hmm, maybe I should jump aboard the 5740 and do the driveway. Well, that was where I made the mistake because when I opened up the driveway, people started to pour in. And of course, that was delay, and then you had to do things for other people and talk to them. And, and when I go at these mods, like I kind of get lost in them. I really enjoy doing them. So. It was nice to see friends and that drop in and a few customers, but kind of really would have liked to, to stay at it without interruptions. But that's it. That's part, of the, that's part of the battle when you're doing anything. And that's why I might have skipped a few steps like bending the plate and stuff because I was trying to do all of this today in between jobs. So I hope you understand. Anyway, again, if you uh, want to check out our website, it's uh, www.specialtyrepairs.ca and uh, if you happen to get on uh, Orange Tractor Talks forum for Kubota tractors, I'm known as Wildfire on there, 
and on Tractor by Net, I'm known as uh, Four Shorts. So if you get a chance, check out those sites because they are good sites as well for anybody who's uh, looking for knowledge on tractors and and whatnot. They are the sites to be on. The the guys on there, I'm telling you, they know their stuff. So check it out. In the meantime, if you uh, if you like what I've done, appreciate the comments. If you don't like what I've done, tell me what you don't like about it. And uh, I appreciate you looking. I I'm sorry this is going to be a little bit shorter than the one hour one that I posted last night. But uh, I had promised you today that I was going to do the uh, dollies for pushing the implements around like the grapple and the bucket. But that will have to be tomorrow or the next day because just ran out of time. Not enough hours in the day. So anyway folks, thanks a million for watching. And with that, I'm out of here.